The topic of today's video is hohenberg cohen theorems. So in this video, I'm going to explain the theorems that were put forward by Hohenberg and Cohen. Okay, so introduction. Hohenberg and Cohen were two scientists and they proved two theorems in 1964. And these two theorems served as the basics for density functional theory. Okay, these two theorems still serve as the basics for the density functional theory. And before moving on towards the theorem, there are some basic assumptions. There are some basics that you should know. And these basics are that the electrons interact with each other and also with the nuclei. As you know that electrons, there are electronic electronic repulsion and there are electronic nuclei attraction. Okay, so these are some basics that electrons interact with each other and electrons also interact with the nuclei. Moving on, the system is considered to be at its lowest energy state, that is the ground state. Okay, so ground state is considered to be the lowest energy state. And then the external potential. So whenever we use the word the external potential, the external potential means that we are talking about the nuclei. And these nuclei are considered to be fixed. These nuclei are considered to be clamped at their position. So these some basic states that the electrons interact with each other. Okay, first of our basic assumption is that the electrons interact with each other and also with the nuclei and the second one states that the system is considered to be at its lowest energy state and the third one states that the external potential that is the nuclei they are considered to be fixed okay so now what are we going to prove in this so the ground state density uniquely determines the external potential Okay, what does it mean? It means that if we have uh, electron density, if we have the ground state electron density, it can be determined by only one external potential. Okay, the ground state electron density can only be determined by only one external potential. What does it mean? It means, in other words, it means that if we have two different external potentials and what does it mean to have two different external potential the two different external potential means two different arrangement of the nuclei so when we have two different arrangement of nuclei when we have two different external potential these two different external potential cannot lead to one ground state electron density okay so the ground state density is determined by only one external potential and if there are more than one external potential then there is only one of them that will determine the ground state electron density okay so the proof to prove this what do we use we use the reductio ad absurdum theorem and what is the reductio ad absurdum in reductio ad absurdum we take an assumption we make an assumption first and then we prove that assumption to be wrong so in this case we have to make an assumption first and what is our assumption assume that there are two different external potentials va and vb and again two different external potential means that we have two different arrangement of nuclei okay and both of these potential give same value of the ground state electron density okay so what we have stated before let me just show you we stated that two different external potential cannot give us one ground state density okay so we are assuming the opposite to our statement okay we are assuming the opposite to our statement that if we have two different external potential and these two different external potential are going to give us the same value of the ground state electron density okay so what we have to do we have to prove this statement to be wrong so moving on towards the proof okay so as i just told you that there are two different external potential va and vb and associated with these external potential we have two hamiltonians ha and hb respectively and these hamiltonians have the wave function psi a and psi b associated with them that can be plugged in the schrodinger wave equation to get the corresponding eigen energy okay so for h a and h b we have psi a and psi b and these can be plugged in the schrodinger wave equation and after plugging in 
after plugging the psi a and psi b h a and h b in the schrodinger wave equation we can get the energy value we can get the eigen value of the energy e a and e b okay so now the variation theorem states that whichever wave function we evaluate for h b okay we have taken the hamiltonian operator b that is we have taken the hamiltonian that is associated with vb external potential okay so we have taken the hamiltonian b and whichever wave function we evaluate for hb let's just say that we are evaluating hb over psi a okay let's just say that we are evaluating hb over psi a and when we evaluate hb over psi a the expectation value should be greater than the ground state energy eb okay let me just say it again that what we are doing here we are explaining that the ground state energy associated with hb is less than the expectation value when hb is evaluated over any other wave function okay so this eb is actually the energy value when we have evaluated hb over the ground state psi b okay when we have well when we have evaluated hb over the ground state psi b the ground state energy comes out to be eb and when we evaluate hb over any other wave function and here we have evaluated hb over psi a then the expectation value should be greater than the ground state energy eb so let's just evaluate hb over psi a so here we are evaluating hb over psi a the ground state eb should be lesser than the expectation value as we have explained here so moving on now add and subtract ha so here we have to add and we have to subtract ha and as you can see here what we have done we have just added ha and we have just subtracted ha in the previous equation and the previous equation was just this okay so we have just added an ha and hb here so now what i'm going to do i'm going to separate this difference and i'm also going to separate this ha and psi a and how i'm going to do this let me just write it like that so as you know that this part of the equation here gives the eigen value of energy for ha so i can replace it with ea and similarly i can also replace hb with the external potential vb and ha with the external potential va so that becomes hb becomes vb ha becomes va what i have done i have just exchanged this hamiltonian operator with the external potential and similarly what i have done here i have just called this equation i have just called this part of equation to be equal to ea because as you know that this that the value of ha over psi a gives the eigen value of energy at ea so moving on if we represent this equation in terms of the electron density rho r then it can be written just like this so what we have here is eb is less than integration over vb r minus va r into psi naught r dr okay so now moving on since a and b can be used interchangeably we know that a and b can be used interchangeably because in our previous assumption what we had done okay so in this slide i have just told you before that the two different external potentials both of these potential give the same value of ground state density because we have taken this assumption that the two different external potential gives the same electron density so we can exchange a and b so what i'm going to do is i'm going to exchange a and b so when i exchange a and b okay this b will become a this a will become b so what i'm going to do i'm going to add both of these equation when i add both of this equation this eb plus ba this will become eb plus ea and less than this part vb minus va and this part va minus vb will cancel out and finally we will be getting ea plus eb so our equation will become eb plus ea is less than ea plus eb 
and this is a contradicting result as you know that ea plus eb cannot be less than eb plus ea so we can call that our assumption is not true okay the result is a clear con contradiction so our assumption was wrong so we can say that the ground state electron density is uniquely determined by only one external potential so this was the first theorem of Hohenberg and Cohen and the link to the second theorem of Hohenberg and Cohen is given in the description you can just click on that link and you will be directed to the second theorem of Hohenberg and Cohen so if you have any question you can ask me in the comments thank you and Allah Hafiz